My peoples, welcome back to the second episode of Audio Essentials. This episode will demonstrate two super easy ways of how to tell if a speaker is blown. The first and easiest way is to just simply take your fingers and press them down on the speaker and kind of let it bounce itself back up. What it should do is it should go down and it should, you know, kind of, like I said, bounce itself or spring itself back into its original position. Another thing you want to do while you're doing this is listen and see if you hear any scraping or like any kind of scratchiness when you push it up and down. That's usually a good indicator that the coil on the inside is either separated or broken or something is wrong with it. So that's probably the easiest way to tell, and it doesn't matter what size the speaker is, but just one thing, kind of make sure you don't press on only one side, because that can make, you know, a larger speaker actually kind of scratch anyways, because what's happening is the cone is actually cantilevering. You know, it's kind of going like that. It's not really going down flush and flat. So, like I said, there's a coil in there, which I will show you here in a little bit, that actually goes up and down. Another very easy thing to do is just get a regular voltmeter. You can get these from anywhere, from Walmart, any store near you has them. And really all you have to do is take your speaker wires or your speaker leads and hook them to each one of the leads of your voltmeter. Alright, leads are hooked up. You want to go ahead and put your voltmeter to this little tiny upside down horseshoe and you want to go to the lowest value. The lowest value is usually going to be whichever numbers don't have a letter next to them. So now you can see it says 6.8 ohms. This is an 8 ohm speaker, and usually between 6.5 and 9, it will vary from what the speaker actually claims that it is. But look what happens when I press up and down on the speaker. See how it kind of changes a lot? Now, if you were hooked up to a speaker that was blown, that's what happens. You won't get a steady resistance reading. Also be careful, you know, not to move the speaker at all because any movement will kind of change it. <laughs> nice. Okay, so now I have my Optimus Pro 7. This also states that this is an 8 ohm speaker. So I'm going to do the same thing, just plug the leads into the speaker terminals. And I will mention again, because you're measuring resistance, it doesn't matter if the red goes on the black or if the black goes on the red. It doesn't matter. So now see, this one's reading 5.5. Now this one has a crossover in it. And that's kind of, um, I've seen them, you know, fluctuate kind of up and down. But just to show you, you can use this on, you know, any type of speaker. It doesn't have to be out of its cabinet or whatever. But also, this one kind of demonstrates more. Make sure you're not moving the speaker around. Because, see, it will actually move the speaker just a little bit, enough to change the resistance. So to further demonstrate what actually goes on when a speaker blows, um, I'm going to go ahead and take off this dust cover and see if we can't get a look down inside the coil. But first, if you ever notice, there's usually two kind of uh, wires. I, I don't know if you would realize that there are wires at first or not, but you always see these two marks. What that is, is that's the leads coming straight from the wires. And what that is, is it goes down and all the wire does is it coils down in a little coil and kind of comes in one and then comes out the other. In here we can see that this is actually the inside of the coil. The wire would be wrapped outside of uh, this brown piece here, which is actually, I guess, the sh housing or the shaft of the coil. So, and if you notice, that center piece doesn't move. So it kind of goes up and down over it. Since we're already here, to further demonstrate, we will remove the actual cone. Okay. Now, that was the cone. This down here is actually called the spider. Now I'm going to cut that. Hopefully we can just pull this whole coil out. It will, as I pull it out, it will kind of, uh, it's going to break up the coil. But to show you, oh, there we go. So I don't know if you can see that, but right there and right there are where the wires actually come in from the leads and go down, and then that is your little coil. 
I don't know what this uh, the actual piece that holds the coil together is called but now what that does is it goes down there inside of that magnet and pretty much what a speaker is is it's an electromagnet in this instance we're sending electricity to it and getting it to excite and move back and forth creating vibrations so now basically what happens most of the time when you blow a speaker you're kind of overdriving this and this is not normal you know just regular wire this is actually a very very thinly coated wire that allows electrons to jump from one to the other what happens is that coating can you know kind of fry off and these can start to contact with each other you know within the coil and that lowers resistance which can in turn uh it can blow amplifiers it can do stuff like that another thing that can happen i've heard of is this kind of becomes dislodged from this whole kind of cylinder here and that's where you can get a lot of the scraping sound or it can just kind of get lodged in there and then it won't let the speaker move at all so then you'll think it's blown i've heard of people taking speakers and just kind of hitting them like that uh thinking they were blown and then it kind of knocks it back out so yep just kind of wanted to show you guys that and back for extra credit anyone who was wondering i believe it goes this is the surround that would have been the cone that i cut out this is the coil that's the spider uh, i believe the magnet is called the motor and then this is the basket these are the terminals those are all the parts of a speaker <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that. Definitely go out if you don't have one and get yourself a voltmeter if you're going to be getting into audio because a voltmeter is just good for anything. But that's going to do it for this one. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.